Hello, I'm Ian Alexander Hansen, also known as Animated Critic, also known as Impasto Animation Studios. Welcome to my training video. Today I will be covering the topic of Character Rigging, Part 1, Illustrator Preparation. Thank you for watching this video. Please watch, enjoy, learn, and comment. I would love to hear from you. We are preparing our character for import into After Effects for animation. Just to show what's going on here, this is the character that will be imported. This is the character as it's broken up so that we can kind of break it and look at it and its constituent parts and understand how it's working. Now the first thing I want to look at is the fact that we use, or I use, rounded edges. Now the reason for this is so that when we start animating the character and pieces are kind of put together, we want to hide where they've been put together a little bit. So, If this were being rotated, then we don't necessarily see as easily the joint between the two pieces. So I will use rounded edges for that purpose. Now a couple different ways we can accomplish that. First of all, just simply starting with M for marquee, just get a rectangle. And then Shift C, which is this anchor point tool. And just grab those points and start curving. Now, you may or may not know, but if I click on one of those points of the Bezier handle, it'll disappear, leaving that part of the shape completely straight and this part curved. This is one way that we can accomplish this effect of having those round edges. Now, if I use A, the direct select tool, to grab those and then press S for scale, we can make one side larger than the other. Thus, eventually over time, getting this basic effect of what I've already accomplished here. So, now the second way we might want to accomplish the same effect we can see in this piece of the arm, where actually what I've done is basically started with a marquee M, added to that a circle O, and just kind of join them together. Make that circle as perfect or as pretty as you want it to be be absolutely perfect or just pretty close depending on how perfectionist you are so on and so forth but then eventually just take them grab them together with the V key and command G will group them together which keeps them together all the time unless I ungroup them so and I've done that here as well on these pieces of the hand you can see that this palm is basically like a pentagon with a couple of circles. This part of the fingers is basically a marquee, a couple of circles. This I probably drew with the pen with the circle and joined them together. So that's it. The other option you can try that came with Adobe Creative Cloud Illustrator is again the marquee and then the letter A for direct select and you can actually grab just those little white circles that show up. You can get your curved corners that way as well. Just take those two with my direct select tool and S for scale. Then I can make one side larger than the other. Scale it however I want. So a couple different ways you can accomplish that, but the point is to get those rounded corners so that we can more uh, have more fluidity between the joints. Now the next thing I want to look at is the artboard. So the artboard here, the white area, if you do command N, new file in Illustrator, it's going to default to one artboard. And there are reasons to use more than one artboard, but for After Effects purposes, you want it just to be one. My artboard default 1920 by 1080 pixels, but you just want one artboard. Okay, now the thing is that After Effects is not going to recognize anything that's outside of that artboard, yet this is the model that I want to bring into After Effects. So if you just kind of select everything, go to Object, Artboards, 
fit to selected art. And your artboard will be exactly the same size as the model and nothing will get lost. Now, the fact that I'm using a model that's gigantic compared to the artboard, there's a reason for that. Usually, I'm, you know, two, three times the size. If by chance I wanted to do a close up of this character, then I don't have to mess with scaling and the character is plenty large to do a close up. That's really important. Because in After Effects, if you start using pin puppets and you try to use the constant rasterize option in After Effects, it works great, except for when you use pin puppets, and then it doesn't work. So I'll make my models much larger than they actually need to be. It's better to scale down if I need to, which I often do, than it is to scale up. So that's it for artboards. Now I want to talk about the divisions of the body. And the first thing that I want to point out here is that what I've done is I've made two heads. One's happy, one's scared. That's what I'm going to need for this video. It's often a good idea to have two heads and they're just one right in front of the other. So in this case, what I'll typically do is I'll just change heads over a single frame. We can get more complicated than that. We could have in between heads, but two heads or three heads, however many expressions you want, is many cases enough. Now the next thing too that I do is a neck. A lot of times you'll see characters that the neck is part of the head or part of the chest or sometimes no neck at all. I like to have a neck, it gives it a little bit more fluidity. So if I do R for rotate, click to choose my uh, pivot point, and then rotate, then you can see that the head, the neck will give that character just a little bit more fluidity in its movement. So I like to have a neck. Not necessary, but I like to have it. Next thing I want to look at is the hip. And the hip is really, really crucial because most action, when you study animation, you learn that most action or a lot of the action starts at the hips. So you have to have a hip that the action can start from. And you see in this particular character, what I've done is the hip is actually hidden. So if I kind of move these legs away, you'll see that the hip is there, but it's hidden. It doesn't, you don't, actually don't need a hip in the sense that you can have a hidden hip that After Effects will understand is there. It would be a null object. But for me to have the hip there, it's, I like to have it there so I can kind of see what's going on. And that's where my action is going to start. So it's really, really important to have that hip. Now I put my spine into three pieces. This is what I usually do. Sometimes I'll use two. You'll see characters sometimes that are made with just like no spine at all and you get a very, very rough kind of a movement. So I like to have different pieces, sometimes two, sometimes three, depending on the size of the character, how big the torso is, also how much time I have. But you, you definitely tend to get a little bit more fluid movement by having the spine broken up into various pieces. So it's something that I like to do. Now the eyes are considered the window into the soul. And you see that I've got eyes that are, you know, decent size. They maybe could be bigger, who knows, but just a decent size eye. But the really important couple of things here are that I use eyelids. And I'll be able to use these eyelids to open and close the eyes to give the character some blink. And that oftentimes brings a character to life. So these eyelids I just kind of made directly from the eyes in this case. You could do it any number of ways. But anyway, the point being that the character can blink. Now I've also separated out the eyebrows. I want the eyebrows to be separate. I don't want them to be glued to the head because then I can control separately and I can get different expressions just from moving the eyebrows themselves as opposed to the whole of them being stuck to the head. So you can get different ideas from that. The other thing too, the eyebrows will often lead the blink. So the eyebrows start moving before the blink. Now the other thing is these uh, blue things here kind of look like sunglasses. It's a little bit confusing, but they're actually, they're not going to be seen. They're actually going to be turned off in After Effects. And what they're for, what they're there for is just to cover the eyelids so that when the sunglasses are in front of the eyelids, you actually see the eyelids. 
And when the sunglasses are above or a different part of the head, the eyelids are no longer to be seen. So you can actually do your blinks that way. So that's what those are for. But as much expression as we can get out of those eyes, both with blinks and with eyebrows, we want to get that. So that's, that's why we do all that. Okay. We've also got hair. It's both in front of and behind the model. So, of course, that's just kind of a nece necessary thing. We, we need a piece of hair that covers the head. We need a piece of hair that's behind the head. So it's just a little practical piece of information. Now, the next thing that I want to look at is the fact that the character is in this thing we call T position with their arms out. We don't like that as animators because it doesn't really show what our characters like, but we do like it when we're modeling and building because it just helps to helps the computer understand where the rotations are supposed to be. The other thing, particularly in After Effects and probably some other programs, is that you probably want to have things separated as much as you can, especially if you're going to use the pin puppet because the the pins will know where to go if these are further away from each other. So that's good to know too. So we use T position. I've built many characters or done many characters that don't start in T position. It works out okay, but T position is really best practice. Now there's other things that I could have done uh, to break it up further. You see that I've got basically the hand is, you know, four fingers are drawn as one. We could make that three, four, five fingers, and you get you can get some more life out of that. It just takes a lot more time. We could take the necklace, which is just a single piece of thing. We could take it and break it into its individual beads or a couple of things. We could take the foot and break off the the ball of the foot and separate that, which is really good if the character is walking a lot. Um, we could even make shoelaces in little pieces. All those things add amazing life to the characters. They also take additional time to do. So, and the last thing I wanted to point out was the shoulders. So I've got this little diagram here. Use shoulders, your characters will thank you. So I like to use shoulders because if you can imagine just people's shoulders going up and down, it just adds a lot of expressivity to the character. So a lot of times you'll see that where the shirt is a part of the shoulder and then you can't really get that kind of expressivity out of it. So, you know, if the shoulder's moving, shoulders move up and down, you know, why do we have to do that? Or whatever the case may be, we can really get more character just from having those shoulders. So that's also a very important piece. And that does it for the divisions of the body. The next thing I want to talk about is layers, and layers are absolutely crucial for After Effects import. So we have to use them. So if I were to take this model and then I just kind of break it down over here and just look at what it's got, it's got a lot of groups and a lot of paths, but we don't really have layers. We need to have those layers because After Effects won't understand it properly. So it's just a very simple command. It's just release to layers, sequence, not build. And then that breaks that into actual layers. And it's super important that you'll actually take those layers and separate them. They can't really be a sub layer. They've got to be their own pieces, which leaves this thing that controlled it empty. And it's got all these individual pieces. Now, you don't necessarily want everything in one individual piece. For instance, that necklace, you could have each ball being a different piece. It's just going to make your job a lot harder. So I'm just grabbing each one, Command X and Command Shift V, paste in place. They're all in one layer. That means that these are useless, can just throw them away. And we do that forever until we've got all of our layers separated in the way we want. You know, just like those cooking shows on TV, I can actually get rid of all these layers because I've done this ahead of time. And additionally, besides separating out into individual layers, I've also named hmm, I've also named each individual layer. And 
And that's really important. This is not for After Effects use. This is for the human's use. You've got to name each layer so that you know what's what. Right thumb, right fingertip, right mid, so on and so forth. You can come up with your own naming system, but you should definitely name each layer. And that's it for the layer preparation. Now, before we go to import this into After Effects, we want to make sure that everything is finaled the way that I want it. Okay, you don't want to change things. As much as possible, you want everything just saved and done, and After Effects is going to remember what it was. And one thing you don't want to do, for instance, is add layers. Once you brought it into After Effects, After Effects is going to get mad at you, and it's not going to know what to do, and you're not going to like it. The other thing you don't want to do is rescale things or resize things. Oh, whoops. This hand was supposed to be bigger. That looks silly, but anyway. Um, that will, After Effects won't understand it, and you'll become unhappy with After Effects. Then the last thing you could, well, actually you could do, is you can change things like, as long as everything else remains the same, the size, the shape, you can change things like colors, for instance, you know, She's been in a green shirt this whole time, and really she should have been in a pink shirt. You can change that. After Effects will pick it up, and it'll go forward with that. Or you take this piece of the body, say, oh, you know what, her belly. She needs a design on that shirt. So, for instance, let's make Charlie Brown stripes, because that's what she needed on that shirt. So you can get away with stuff like this, as long as everything kind of remains the same shape, the same size. Then you're okay. I still don't recommend making too many changes just because once everything's settled and ready to go, you really want it to be in its most final form that you can do it. So, But that's the idea. And so with all this, we can also get rid of Anything else we don't need. I like to have just everything I'm going to need right there in my artboard. So like I would probably get rid of this and this, just get rid of all that or keep it, whatever you want. But more than likely I would, I would keep everything, only what I want inside my artboard. I would save that, Command S. I'm really, really careful about naming and about where everything is so that I can always find everything. So like for instance, I started this on the 30th of August, so 2014-08-30, and then whatever it's called. And I'll do that so that I can always find everything. It always comes right up in order. And then I put all my characters in this thing called images. I've done this before. This is Lenin Pieces 02. And I'm saved, ready to go. Bring this character to life in After Effects. Thank you again for watching this video. If you have any other comments, things that are missing, or videos you'd like to see in the future, please do leave them. Thank you again.